NFC antenna design does not need to be difficult, and it certainly is it. In this video, we'll be going over a few tools, tips, on how to design your own antenna just like this one for NFC purposes. Manufacturers such as ST and NXP have provided certain antenna design tools to help you achieve this, and this makes the whole antenna design process relatively simple and easy with avoiding all the complex equations and such that comes with antenna design. Here we are in the e-design suite of ST, and as you can see here, you can easily access this by logging, uh, plugging it into your favorite internet browser and typing in e-design suite. We can see a few different calculators here, but we're interested in NFC RFID calculators to the NFC inductance one. I'm quite a big fan of ST myself, so we're going to go forward with ST here. And as you see this screen here, we are introduced with the standard antenna that they provide when you we go into this page. A standard rectangular antenna of 1.5 microhenries at 13.56 megahertz. This is the standard frequency that NFC uses, so we'll be designing towards that. As you can see, we have a different bunch of parameters and such, and I will get through them all but let's take it bit by bit. First, the antenna, the number of turns. What is it? This antenna is essentially an inductor. And for those of you who do not know how NFC works or what is it, I would like to know a bit more about the math behind it. I've included two application notes in the description below about some bit background and some bit of reading, which I highly recommend you do just to get your head around it and understand it a bit more, especially if you're interested or you might think a few projects might come where you want to use this type of technology. So we see here that we have an equivalent inductance of 1.5 microhenries and we wonder, well, how does this achieve? It's, is this the antenna we use to achieve it without touching anything? Well, we can check that by using the formula which is needed to our design, the resonant frequency formula, a formula that you probably have seen before. And it's, as you can see here, it's asking for values like the frequency, which we have, the inductance, which we have, and the capacitance. What is the capacitance? What, where do we get from? Is it the straight capacitance? Is it something we put in? Well, we get that from the data sheet of a certain tag or microcontroller you may end up using. Here we are with the ST25TB04K, a tag I see that I've randomly chosen from ST's line of NFC tags and such. Not all devices have NFC, only certain ones, so do keep that in mind and you do have to look for it. So if we go into this data sheet here, we can find out what we're looking for. Here we are in the data sheet of the device. We see we have 48 pages to go through see a bunch of features that comes with it to see if, if it really matches what you're looking for. A bit more description. I highly recommend you read through this to understand it and get a get your head around it a bit. I always recommend reading the data sheet. Always don't avoid it. In this case, we know what we're looking for. We're looking for the RF parameters of this device. Here we are on page 36 of the data sheet. We see the RF parameters and we see it has an internal tuning capacitor. This is exactly what we're looking for. So in this chip itself, there is a tuning capacitor which is used to help alongside the inductor to give us our resonant frequency, which is exactly what we need. And we can see it has a typical value of 68 picofarads. With that formula we've just seen, we're going to plug in all these numbers and see what we get. Here we are on the online calculator that I've randomly googled because I do not want to enter into my calculator. And we're going to see what we get. So we know we're looking for the inductance. What inductance do we need? Since we have the capacitance, we know what resonant frequency we want. So we're going to leave that blank, make sure the units are the same, and let's check it. 2.02 microhenries. So we're not that far off, actually, which is quite good in this case. But I'll show you, I'll tell you the reason why. So back here in our, in our antenna design, we're not far off from the 2. The 1 if we went to 4. Oh, we're a bit over there. And this is quite bad, really, because we can't really shave anything off. But however, if we kept underneath it, we can actually increase this value by adding in some capacitance. So what do I mean here? So here we are in paint as I'm a professional and I'm going to show you here. So this is our chip here. This is our tuning capacitor right over here. And we are going to our inductor, which is our coil. And as from our calculator states, if we head back to our calculator, so we need to get a inductance of 2.02 2.025 which will give us an ideal this would be ideal to reach our resonant frequency let's keep that in mind 2.025 is the ideal but let's try with 1.5 so here we get a resonant frequency of 15.75 which is a bit over what we require how are we going to shave this off this is where the capacitor comes in so if you remember from your early days of electronics that putting capacitors in parallel actually add on to the capacitance. So we have 68. Okay, what if we put 75? 
Oh, you see it, it's gone down. I'm gonna put 85, right? 90, 95. So I might put 90 to 95, something like that. Maybe I'll put 95 in. It's close enough. I don't think it'll make a big difference anyway to your things, to your design, but we'll leave it at that. So in 95, we've got 68 here with some quick mathematics we get a value of 27 picofarads coming back to paint over here if we place this capacitor here this is essentially acting as two parallel capacitors so ideally we would have 27 picofarads if we cannot find 27 picofarads we will round we'll round it to 25 or 30 depending again on the answer whatever you want whatever you feel is right. It's all arbitrary and really it shouldn't make a big difference with just the side values, it's just whatever you can get. And this is how we achieve this 13.56 megahertz really of resonant frequency with our designed antenna. So coming back over here to our calculator, we are very happy with that. And now we're back here at the antenna design portion. And you might be thinking, well, it's lucky that it's, it started off with three, but what if I don't want something else well you can always put it to four or five or whatever you you're depending on your tag or microcontroller whatever it is that you're working with it's gonna vary instead of course all these other parameters for your size so we could put it to 50 and 50 and as you can see we've got a whole different antenna here and we can fit our size needs and constraints it's really really useful we can also do this with space a width spacing and thickness so if we did a width uh, if we did a width of 0.3 you see it's going to change a spacing of or one if we really wanted to it's going to change we have a thickness of 35 mic microns these are all values that depend on you whatever you want to design to there's no layout thing there's no whatever it all depends on your project your design what do you need the substrate portion of it is again referring back to your PCB layer stack of ask your PCB manufacturer what do you need what do you have what they can provide you and what is their standard layer stack up you'd enter the thickness here and the relative electrical permi permittivity or standard it's 4.6 but again ask them they'll give you an answer and that's all you need to know that is literally it you can input it into this your design and you can test it to see if you're happy with it and so on but you may be thinking, well, I've seen it. They've got curved edges on some and NFC have seen circles. How do I get that type of look in whatever? Well, if you wanted a bit of a circular one, circular one or whatever shape, I think you may need to do a bit of calculations on that. This doesn't fit your exact design requirements. Here you are in application note 2866. And this is a how to design a 13.56 megahertz customized antenna for ST25 NFC slash RFID tags a very very helpful application noting exactly what your question is see the contents what is the procedure and whatever and we're going over to here i'm going to briefly skip through this because i really would like you to read this on your own time it's very useful and you can see the calculation to where a spiral antenna is a circular inductance of square ones i believe this is all very self-explanatory just the math in it unfortunately there is some math that we have to do to achieve this we can also see later in the application note that the tuning contactless measurement methods and how do we see if our antenna is performing as it should. This is where we would use a, a VNA or there's other standard lab procedures as they've shown here. So it's very useful. Do take a look at it. Another application note I recommend reading is AN3249. It goes over the serial internal capacity and consideration for antenna tuning. And this is essentially what we've just spoke about, the antenna tuning uh, with the internal antenna. And gives a bit more detail on what it what it is. It gives a bit more detail on what is it and how do you do such a thing. But again, for ease of use and to design your own NFC antennas, I would highly recommend sticking with this. And especially if you're just getting into it, dip your toes in and see. Before we end off, before I end off, I would like to say, don't be afraid to make mistakes with these things. It's all a learning process, especially with this kind of stuff. There's no harm in just entering random numbers and seeing what turns up and everything sometimes the best way is just trial and error